the uh, dune buggy, not on the sand spit, because you can't get onto the sand spit from the back. Yeah. You can, there used to be roads in there, now there's hiking trails and horse trails. It's a natural break for the for the bay. It's just all sandy over there? It's a, just a big sand dune. Yeah. It's a half a mile wide, four miles long, and it's the, na the natural break for the bay. Is there shells on it? There are there sand dollars and shells on the on the opposite side of the uh, sand spit from the bay side. Uh, the uninhabited beach out there has a lot of things on it. Cause I I have groups like you girls here that uh, have me drop them off over there and they, they park their car uh, in the back bay and they walk that outer beach oh, wow. uh, all the way back to their car. Oh, yeah, really? and then sometimes they'll park one car here and then go so start their walk in from back there. Then they'll call me and say, okay, we're out on the point. I'll go over and pick them up, bring them to their car over here. So they walk it both ways. Wow. It's a group of girls, just like you girls. Are they walk, is it a walking group? A little bit. Walkers or something? Yeah, they're just, you know, naturalists. They they just like to do things. Sometimes they power walk. Oh. oh. Sometimes they stroll. Oh, I have to stroll. I even power walk. Yeah. Well, when you get out on the wet sand beach, it's it's like walking on concrete almost. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you go out into the surf. Yeah, if you go out into the surf. Yeah. Well, it's not like North Point where you can't get around North Point at high tide because you got to go up around the, 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 uh, yeah, the, the. It's sandy all the way. It's sandy all the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, 1968 stopped the climbing of the rock. It became a natural preserve along with the sand spit. The sand spit's open to the public from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, you can kayak over, walk in, force back in from the back. Uh, you can boat over, uh, swim over if you're feeling frisky. If you feel frisky, you can swim. The rock is only climbable by the Salinian Indians once a year to go up there and perform a, a ritual they perform once a year. And they got that right granite. They get to go up there once a year for a week. It's been a week long. You know, I've never seen it happen. Four years out of I don't know if it is or not. It's always in the paper. But I don't remember what that is. Well, I heard they go up there and they streak. Oh, really? Yeah, they go up there and run around naked. On the top? Yeah. No, I'm Jesus. Uh, I was told, and I don't know this to be true, that years ago, uh, the Indians, on a full moon night or a certain bright moon night, uh, they would go up there and the, the, the ocean was lit up really well and they did some kind of ritual to bring the whales in close because they'd go out in canoes and what have you and harpoon whales. They're all here. There's a few of them. Yeah, they're, they're smoking it out. Yeah. And there's a, there, I went out yesterday just uh, went, went around the rock about a mile and a half out, went north to Cayucas. Uh, just straight across from where uh, North Morro Bay, where North Point is, and you drop down into Cayucas and Toro Creek, where it comes by there. Uh, straight off uh, of the water, straight off from there, about a mile and a half, two miles out, we encountered three or four whales. Uh, I was on the Nokin right here. Uh, the very first boat, Nokin. So it is time right now in Morro Bay for them to be coming? Yeah, well, the, the greys are headed back, and they're almost done heading back, and now the, the humpbacks are showing up, going oh. down. But there's a, there's a bait pond. Mm -hmm. Because there were sheer waters. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a ton of bait. In, in oh, really? The, yeah, little bait feeder fish. Do they, uh, when do they feed in the morning? Or they'll, they, they'll, 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 they'll,
Russian built boat for the 1992 World Cup race. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Wow. I'm going to tell you. It, it got. Uh, they got disqualified. The Russians and the Soviet Union had a fallout that year, and it, it, the race was going to take it off from San Diego. The Russians bailed and just went and left that boat in San Diego. Well, somehow or another, the U.S. got got their hands on it, and they put it in the Maritime Museum in San Diego for about five years. Then they auctioned it off. Some guy bought it, built a cabin on it, and started cruising around on it. Uh, eight years ago, he sold it to the guy who brought it in here and who owns it now, who is an Alaskan fisherman who was sailing up and down the west coast in it with his wife and they weren't going to be able to get back in time for his salmon season. So they parked it here, caught a plane, went to Alaska for his salmon season. When he's done salmon fishing, he'll come back out, pick it up, and take it back out to sea. 90-foot mast, 70-foot boat, 14-foot keel. Wow. Uh, uh, all right, but you can, uh, we, got, we got a 20-foot deep anchor, so three mooring balls in our anchor start with a bigger boat. 